The Rufus Porter Museum honors the life and work of a man who can be thought of as the poor man's Leonardo. He was an artist, inventor, publisher, scientist, and so much more, says museum co-president Beth Causey. He was just one of those people who was living at a time when uh, the country was founding. They needed to have creative people, and he filled the spot. It was amazing. Rufus was born in Massachusetts in 1792 and came to Maine as a nine-year-old. He was restless, curious about everything, and hated farming. So the family sent him back to Massachusetts to learn the shoemaking business from his brother. Didn't like that, did not stick to it very long, um, and said, forget this, I'm going back to Maine. So he actually walked from Boxford, Massachusetts to Portland, Maine. Rufus is remembered most for his wall murals, folk art paintings which adorned walls throughout the Northeast, particularly northern New England. A few of his murals are on display in the church house, one of two buildings on the museum's campus. His composition was extraordinary. He could do depth, the big trees in the foreground, the mid trees, the little trees. He had a great sense of perspective and his compositions were wonderful. He liked to show you where the light was coming from against the dark side of the tree. If you look at these trees, you'll see that one side of the tree has a black line and the black line indicates the shady side of the tree. Now this was at a time when... Ron Clay from the Center for the Preservation of Wall Paintings in Hollowell joined us to talk about Porter's work. I doubt that much of the artwork was done in the wintertime because we don't find winter depicted in any of these pictures. It's always spring or always summer, maybe because people who are trying to survive a Maine winter or a New Hampshire winter or a Vermont winter didn't want to look at pictures of snow. Using a brush, stencils, and working freehand, Porter would do a wall in a day, perhaps receiving as much as $5 for his work. He also used a camera obscura like this one to do tracings or miniature silhouettes. He always wanted to be doing something else. He could Museum curator Carla Leandri Ryder told me he often walked great distances pulling a carriage and openly sharing his ideas. Everything he did, he was never secretive about it. His book, Curious Arts, he basically tells you, this is how I do this, and here's how you can do it. He was an educator, maybe not in the traditional sense, but his entire life. He was always trying to just impart wisdom to people. He established a magazine called Scientific American, in which he reported on the latest scientific developments, telling readers the value of his publication was greater than going to school. His only schooling was six months at Freiburg Academy. He was way before his time, 50 years before the Wright brothers, and yet he had a flying machine. Everybody thought he was kook. But we think he's terrific now. That's why we're saving him. Perhaps he should have gone to business school. He sold his patent for a revolving gun chamber to Samuel Colt for 100 bucks. By 1849, he was advertising his aeroport with strong leather bottom to protect itself and passengers from the arrows of Native Americans out west. He planned to carry people from New York to the California Gold Rush in three days for 50 bucks. He flew small versions, but this big boy never got off the ground. One invention that did was the rotary pump. This is the rotary pump for use in uh, open chest surgery. So you turn this. Yeah and it suctions out the blood from the chest. After surgery, you want to give that oxygenated blood back to the patient, so you turn it the opposite direction, and... Everybody dies. Everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> Many of his inventions, such as the self-adjusting cheese press, a floating dock, and a butter churn, lessened labor on the farm, perhaps because he wanted to spend his time on other pursuits. He married Eunice Twombly of Portland. They had 10 children, um, and he did have two wives. So his first wife did pass away a year after he marries another woman, has six children with her. Um, she was also 30 years younger than him. He was almost 60 at this point. She was almost 30. Um, again, that might play into his likability as well. I mean, if he's able to, to attract a younger woman, I would think he's probably an agreeable guy. <laughs> his many descendants seem to have remembered him as a dreamer, an eccentric who died in 1884 at the age of 92. 
the obit that was actually in Scientific American actually states he died from diarrhea, which is kind of an interesting Thanks, way to die. <laughs> um, but no, he, he did not have a lot of money. Rufus Porter was a remarkable man, best remembered now for his work as a wall muralist. Charming art that still delights and may be hidden under layers of wallpaper in old homes all over the region.